Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to factorize a difference of squares. We're going to take a look at these four examples together that get more and more complicated, but let's start with the basics with our first example. Factor completely. x squared minus 6 squared. We have a difference of squares here. The minus tells us that it is a difference. And here we have something squared and here we have something squared. So a difference of squares. And every time you have this structure here, you can use a formula to write this as a product. So if you have something like a squared minus b squared, something squared minus something squared, then you can write this as a product in two parentheses that are multiplied by each other. In one of the parentheses we have a minus, in the other one a plus, and then we have this a here, so this first part that is squared, we take the a and write it here in the first spot and here in the first spot, and then we take the b, so the second part that is squared, and it is here in the second spot here and here as well. Let's use this formula to write this difference of squares as a product. So we have two parentheses that are multiplied by each other. In one of them we have a minus, in the other one a plus. Then we start with the a. So we go to the first part here and take a look at what is squared here. The x is squared, so we take the x and write it in the first spot here and the first spot here. And then we go to the second part here and take a look at what is squared here. It is the 6, so we take the 6 and write it in the second spot here and the second spot here and we are done. So easy example because everything was prepared perfectly. Of course this is not the case in the second example anymore u squared v squared minus 49y squared. So this time we don't have something squared minus something squared because here we have something squared, something squared. So it is not one big square. So we have to prepare this a little bit before we can apply the formula. How can we write the first part here as one big square? Well, we have the u that is squared and the v that is squared. They are multiplied, so I can just take the u and the v and write them in the parentheses and square this thing then, so that I have something squared. Then I have my minus and I want to do the same here, but here I have this number, so the 49. I need something squared, but the good thing is that the 49 is a square number, so I can write the 49 as 7 squared. So instead of the 49, I write it as 7 squared. And then I have the same situation here where I have something squared times something squared. I want to have one thing squared, so let's write this in parentheses then that we're going to square. We have the 7 and the y in our parentheses then. And now it is perfectly prepared to use the formula because we have something squared minus something squared. Okay, we want to write this as a product then, so we write two big parentheses that are multiplied by each other. In one we have a minus, in the other one a plus. Then how can I find my a? Well, it is this part here, the first one, that is squared. So here it is my uv that is squared. So I take the uv and write it in the first spot here and the first spot here. And then for my second part here, I go to my second part here and take a look at what is squared. Here it is the 7y that is squared, so I take the 7y and write it in the second spot and here as well, and this is my product. 
next example. Fractions, <laughs> of course, they make everything more complicated, but we do the same things. We have 1 over 4x squared minus 9 over 16y to the power of 6. Okay, something completely different. We want to have a difference of squares. So where are the squares? I can write the 1 as a 1 squared. It's the same thing. So that is okay if I do that. The 4 is a square number. I can write it as 2 squared. So I have a square here, a square here, and I had my x square anyway. So this is good. I have squares everywhere. Then I have my minus and the same thing here. The 9 is a square number. I can write it as 3 squared. And the 16 as well, I can write it as 4 squared. So I had this square here, this square here. What about the y to the power of 6? Can I write this as a square as well? Yeah, I can because this uh, the, the 6 is divisible by 2. So I can just divide the 6 by 2, which gives me 3. So I have y to the power of 3 in here. This is the rule because if you reverse this now, you would multiply your exponents. So 3 times 2 equals 6. Okay, now we have squares everywhere, green squares. Let's write all of the things as one big square minus another big square. Here, we can write the 1 over 2 in here and my x in here and all of this squared because all of them were squared and we just write them in parentheses. The same here, we want to square all of them. So we take the 3, we take the 4 and we take the y to the power of 3 and all of this then is squared. Now we have a nice big difference of squares. We can apply the formula. We write two big parentheses that are multiplied by each other. In one we have a minus and the other one a plus. And then my a comes from this first part here. So everything that is squared, my 1 over 2 x is going to be my first part here and my first part here. And then my second part is from the second thing here. So everything that is squared here, no matter how it looks, I just take it, write it in the second spot here and the same thing here. And I found my product. And in the last example, yeah, this is different again because this time the 5 is not a square number and the 7 is also not a square number. So how can I get this structure of something squared minus something squared here anyway, although I don't have square numbers? Well, let's start with a 5. How can I write this as something squared? Because this is what I need. Well, I cannot just take the 5 and write it in here because then I would change this expression. I would have 5 squared, which is 25 and not just the 5. But if I take the square root of 5, then I didn't change this expression because the square and the square root cancel each other out and only the 5 is what is left here. So to write a 5 as a square, I can just use the square root. Okay, x squared was already here, which is good. I need squares. Then I have my minus. And the same thing with the 7. It is not a square number, but I need a square in my um, expression here. So I take again the square root of 7 so that I write the 7 as square root of 7 and all of this squared. Okay, now I need one big thing squared. I don't have that yet because I have this squared and this squared here. So I want to combine these two to one 
big square. I can do that by just taking the square root of 5 from here and the x from here because there is a multiplication between them. And then I have my minus and this is good so far. The square root of 7 squared is what I need for my formula now. Let's write this last example as a big product. We have a minus in one of the parentheses and a plus in the other one. So my A, I find it in the first part here. So all of the things that are squared come here. So I have the square root of 5x in the first spot here and the first spot here as well. And then for my b, I go to the second part, take a look at everything that is squared. It's just the square root of 7. So it goes in here and in here. And this is how you can write a difference of squares as a product. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.